In my last two videos, I discussed Perp's quick rise to fame alongside ASAP Rocky, as well as his sudden downfall after beefing with ASAP Mob. In this video, I will be exploring the next chapter of Perp's story, discussing his hiatus period, life in Atlanta, B&B crew, recent releases, and return to fame. Falling into obscurity in 2014, Perp's mental state began to get extremely shaky, lashing out on Twitter with absurd tweets and pointless drama that only further isolated him. On the 27th of May, he remastered his intoxicated mixtape, clearing up the compression and removing the DJ tags. This version was released on iTunes and was very underrated at the time, with tracks such as Who I Be, My Stacks, and Big White Cups proving SGP's production and style was only getting better. However, due to his poor reputation, this tape didn't receive a whole lot of attention. After breaking up with his girlfriend in 2014, Perp dropped his final project of the year, a low-key EP titled Larry Bird Season. The tape showed promise, with Perp exploring a similar style to his previous project, Intoxicated. But due to his status within the rap scene, the tape didn't receive much attention. Larry Bird Season dropped in July of 2014 and it was Perp's last project before a long hiatus that lasted throughout the rest of the year. It's rumoured that Perp was on a drug binge during this time period, but evidence of this is fairly inconclusive. Meanwhile, the cloud rap slash trill wave scene was at its height in popularity with new audiences being mostly oblivious towards who Perp even was. This was a great year for the underground, with the X-rated clan members diversifying and building up strong and dedicated fan bases. Fast forward to January of 2015, and Perp started to go on a rampage, dropping the three track Dark Angel Part 1, Dark Angel's Instrumentals, and Money Mendoza within the same month. Dark Angels Part 1 featured Perp's grimy and distorted vocals with the tracks Leonardo, Bloody Mary and She Feelin' Me. Videos for Leonardo and Bloody Mary were later posted to Perp's YouTube channel but were taken down shortly after. This behaviour wasn't anything new but it became a defining aspect of the 2015 era with Perp uploading videos and songs to YouTube and pulling them down from the site quickly resulting in collectors and archivists, such as SMH, Purpoline, and other channels preserving the music. The Dark Angels instrumentals were later leaked and are highly regarded within Perp's discography. Pretty much all the beats on the tape are bangers and vary in style, having just the right balance of experimentation, accessibility, and mastering. Some of my favorites include Bloody Mary, Diamonds and Crystals Money Train
and Lexus Part 2. Just two days after the release of the Dark Angels instrumentals, Perp dropped Money Mendoza, a heavily experimental and strange mixtape. On the tape, Perp's lyrics sound a lot more thought out than usual, but the mixing and mastering are incredibly poor. Despite this, Money Mendoza is heavily underrated, especially considering just how experimental some of the production is, especially the opening track Hypnotized, with its chaotic and out of the box snare patterns. Who Is He is another very weird track, with what sounds like a child, cartoon or video game character, laughing, pitched into a melody. This production wasn't as good as Dark Angel, but still managed to capture my attention, due to the crazy ideas and experimentation. This mixtape, like many others in Perp's discography, showcases wacky ideas and sketches rather than fully fleshed out songs, hence the lack of mastery. While this approach to music usually deters listeners, it's something that I personally admire, as it often results in brief moments of genius, where mistakes and blemishes create interest. During this period of Perp's career, no one else sounded anything like him, and his music was extremely polarizing, receiving huge amounts of hate within the YouTube comment sections of his videos, as well as many people sleeping on his projects. But this didn't stop his small but loyal fan base from giving his music a chance, and many listeners slowly started to warm up to his new sound. While these releases were not very well received at the time, they are now praised within the community and seen as classics that some fans actually rank higher than Perp's music during his early career. Around the same time of these releases, Perp would pair up again with Ruben Slick to drop the highly psychedelic track Mind, produced by Mental Vendetta. <laughs> Later in February, he dropped Rich's Revenge, produced by J-Storm and DJ Dabs. The whole tape was very out of character, considering Perp had never put out a full project produced by someone else. While the tape isn't bad, it is kind of generic and not very memorable, considering that most people listen to Perp for his unique production and not his lyrics. By this stage, Raider Clan had basically broken up, and the underground scene was changing significantly, with Denzel Curry and Puyo taking the spotlight in Miami. Meanwhile, artists in Atlanta were pushing the scene in new directions, with rappers such as Little Yachty, Little Uzi Vert, and Playboy Cardi making moves. These rappers were all fans of Perp at some stage, with Uzi Vert using a beat by Perp on White Shit, and Cardi showing his support for Raider Clan and Perp on Twitter, while dismissing ASAP, which is pretty ironic considering Cardi and ASAP Mob's affiliation today. It's also worth mentioning that goth money was a huge influence on these artists, which can be heard in the delivery, lyrical minimalism, and style of listing brands and clothing in their songs. This is pretty evident when comparing tracks like Dope Runner by Kane Groceries and Broke Boy by Playboy Cardi. Marquis was switched on and made the move to Atlanta to visit his sister and get involved with the scene in hopes of re-establishing himself and helping to guide the youth like he had with Raider Clan. He reportedly made music with artists such as OG Mako and Father and linked up with video producer Dreams to get back on his feet in the industry. While in Atlanta, Perp began to establish a scene with Forney, Uno and Esco, adding a darker element to the movement. Goth Money also began to get involved with the Atlanta scene and things were looking good for Marquise once again. It was clear that Perp wanted everyone to succeed just like he had before. Various important tracks came out during this time, including Terror Game, which featured Perp, Kane Groceries, Black Cray, Polari, Forney, Splurge, Jug God, Vixen by Forney and SGP, 
Animorph Religion by Perp, Esco and Forney, and Opportunist with Uno the Activist and Kane Groceries. Forney can also be seen in the Why So Serious music video, An iPhone, along with Uno the Activist. Yodi and Marquis also exchanged numbers at the time, and it's highly likely he made contact with other bigger artists. As the scene grew in popularity, news spread, and it wasn't long before Bari was notified. As I mentioned in part two, Bari had been beaten up at Rocky's show in Miami and held a great resentment towards Marquise. This resentment would plague Perp throughout his career, with Bari and his associates getting in the ear of anyone involved with Perp and blackballing from the industry. But things were not always this way. In fact, Perp and Bari got along well during Perp's time in New York. Marquis had also said he was cool with Bari and a few other ASAP members after the Matt Stoops incident in the Raider Clan ASAP departure video. Knowing this, it was extremely foolish for Bari to have sacrificed himself in Miami and the problems between the two of them could have easily been avoided. Perp detailed his conflict with Bari in a Facebook post on the 3rd of March 2018. His post claims that while in Atlanta, Bari sent his henchmen to spy on him to see what he was up to. Bari would also invite Uno, Forney and Dreams to come to New York and to turn them against Marquise, allegedly giving them PCP laced weed. This is honestly hard to believe but it's still an interesting idea, as Perp claims their energy was off, and he could tell something wasn't right. As a result, Perp claims that Dreams began spreading rumours about him throughout Atlanta, in an attempt to ruin his reputation. Bari arrived in Atlanta shortly after, and had a confrontation with Perp at a party that Dreams had set up. Calling Perp out in front of his supporters, and giving him a bad name. An anonymous source present at the event, claims Marquise was beaten badly and held in a choke until his manager shot in the air, causing Bari and his team to flee the scene. Despite Bari's efforts to taint Perp's image, Goth Money continued to stay faithful. However, Uno and Forney switched up, claiming ASAP and V-Loan, as well as Yodi and the rest of the scene. As a result, the fuck Perp trend was engaged, with Cardi, Yodi, Uno, Thousand, and more taking shots at Perp, despite his help, guidance, and influence on their style. This trend would only amplify with the release of Space Goes Pussy by Denzel Curry in January of 2016. The track featured Lofty 305 of Metro Zoo, who Perp had collabed with frequently, Ski Mouse the Slump God, and Rising Star XXX Tentacion. All of these artists were from Perp City. X explains in his No Jumper interview that Denzel needed to close this chapter of his life and encouraged the diss to happen. How do I put it? He didn't want to diss him. Uh -huh. And I said, this is a chapter of your life because every, even the dots on my face are represents chapters. It's chapter, it's chapter one and chapter two. So my thing is, there's a, there's a beginning, there's a, the, 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 the peak, and then there's the end. Mm -hmm. you know, the downfall, or to some degree, you can end that top. You get me? Right. So... He was going, he's going through a different, he's going through different chapters and that's what he needs to realize. So when you have this person from your past that is, has been harassing you for a very long time, because obviously he's, he's, he's a grown ass man, he can't bully a grown ass man, you feel right. me? But Denzel is a person that is so passive to where he'll let people fuck him over as far as his name. So everybody had this, this, this distinct look on Denzel, like, oh, like, and I, I don't want to say pussy, but everybody had this distinct, like, oh, hey, you know, that nigga not going to say nothing. That's how Perp was. Uh -huh. Perp was like, oh, that nigga not going to say nothing. He not going to do shit. You feel me? And then I was in, I'm in Denzel's squad. You feel me? I'm, in, I'm ULT. I'm still members only. I'm still VR, but I, I was in, I'm, I'm in ULT. You feel me? So I can't have my brother, because I call Denzel my brother. I call this nigga my brother. I call all these niggas my brother. You feel me? Bruno's my brother as well. I can't have this nigga in my section having a nigga trying to bitch him out right. and knowing that I'm going to let that shit slide because that's not the nigga I am. So I came in and I left my mark. I left my mark on that. So I told him, I was like, here's what we're going to do if you want us on the track. You're going to come for him. You're going to say something. You're going to address it like you should have been did right. because you're not going to get over on this until you win. Uh -huh. You can't settle. By this stage, Adam22's No Jumper podcast had gained a huge following and various rappers would go on to talk about the resentment toward Perp and experiences working with him, 
while others were trash talking without any idea of who he really is. Some standout interviews include X's, where he explains the reason behind his diss track with Denzel Curry. Yodi, who reveals that Bari had gotten in between the two, and Smoke Perp, who tries to hide the fact that he got his name from SGP and was a big fan before the fuck perp trend had been engaged. In March of 2016, Playboy Cardi and Una the Activist dropped Philo and Thug, taking shots at Perp by disrespecting his friend Jit. Anyone familiar with Perp's music knows that Jit was an extremely close friend of his who had been murdered. This diss signified yet another betrayal and sent Perp into another downward spiral. It was pretty obvious that Bari was pulling the strings behind the scene and had deliberately turned Cardi and Uno against Perp. Knowing Marquis's vulnerability, I'm almost certain ASAP members wanted to stir the pot and gain a reaction, which is exactly what they got when Perp took the beef to new levels by dissing the late ASAP Yams on Twitter with this tweet. Perp's partner Choppo also dropped the Cooking Yams diss track around the same time in an effort to show loyalty towards Perp. The track was not taken well by ASAP members, and 12 invited Choppo to come find him in New York. Shortly after, Choppo claimed it wasn't an ASAP Yams diss, but rather a diss to ASAP Mob, claiming he had no beef with anybody and just wanted to send a message. While these disses towards Yams were distasteful, Many ASAP fans are unaware of the context and how the ASAP mob had been disrespecting Jit's name for many years. Despite being portrayed by almost everyone, Marquis trusted his faith in a new crew that he had formed, called BNB, aka Black Money Boys Death Row. The group consists of both producers and rappers, including Choppo, Loco Los, Crook, Screwman Flames, I'm Pissed, Ego Mackie, and many others. With BNB and Terror Gang, Perp began making moves and dropping another set of tapes and VAs. A few standout projects dropped during this time, including BNB Death Row, God of Black Episode 2, and the legendary Blackland Radio 2.0. This tape felt like a fresh breath of air, with Marquis dropping some of his best and most sinister production yet. The beats were extremely atmospheric and brought back the Mortal Kombat video game samples from the original tape, as well as the sound of penguins from Super Mario 64 and other cool and haunting atmospheres. This tape perfected the style Perp had been working on in previous years and proved to be a hit with fans. I personally think this is one of Perp's best projects and by far my favorite rap release of 2016. Marquis also dropped the mixtape Overkill which featured some decent beats, paired with some poorly sung auto-tuned vocals. Later in October, SGP apologised for disrespecting Yams, and decided to put the beef behind him. He then dropped an unreleased track featuring Rocky and titled it R.I.P. Yams, which was originally titled Black Man's Wealth. Perp also squashed his beef with Denzel Curry around the same time, and a picture of the two could be seen on Twitter. Curry has also made a fairly decent effort in educating various interviewers on his history with Perp and Raider Clan, which has helped bring some awareness to Perp's legacy. Perp also kicked off the Veneno series in 2016, featuring chopped and screwed remixes of various styles, including R&B, soul, and hip hop. He would also drop a bunch of instrumentals throughout the year, including the Sub-Zero instrumentals. These beats were extremely hard and super unique, here are some of my favorites.
As the year came to a close, Marquis released follow-ups to his highly regarded instrumental tape, Winter's Mind, with Winter's Mind 2 and 3. However, these tapes featured vocals from Perp and had a different quality to them. The grind wasn't over, and Perp kept dropping music into 2017, with Winter's Mind 4 dropping on the first day of January. Later in March, B&B affiliate Spooky Lee dropped Ice Cream Demon 1.8, which features production from Perp. This was a really great mixtape, with Lee's deep vocals fitting Perp's production extremely well. The two would follow up with the Underworld EP later in the year. Perp would also drop Angry America on the 16th, which features the V-Loan V flipped into an A on the cover, with Perp now claiming he owns V-Loan. A fair claim, considering the V-Loan concept used the Raider Clan hieroglyphics. Speaking of V-Loan, on the 12th of July 2017, a video surfaced alleging sexual misconduct between ASAP Bari and an unidentified nude woman. Bari claimed the video was fake, and shortly after, V-Loan's deal with Nike was terminated. The woman ended up suing Bari for over 1 million, stating she was sexually assaulted by him. The whole incident shattered Bari's reputation in the media, resulting in Rocky and the rest of ASAP turning their backs against Bari. Ian Connor also turned his back on Bari and had previously been manipulated into giving Perp the cold shoulder, despite being a huge fan. With Perp's main enemy out of the way, the next thing that needed to be restored was his reputation. He continued to have a productive year throughout 2017, working with Little Tracy, Spooky Lee and B&B, as well as signing a deal with Yeah We On Entertainment, who had helped to distribute his music. He would continue his rampage throughout the rest of 2017 and 2018, with an endless array of projects, including Miami Music, Cream, Overkill 2, Florida Baby, Florida Stick Drill, Bell Harbor, Blackland Radio 3, Space Ghost Mafia, Little Vamp, Blood Moon EP, Vampire Life, Rihanna's Baby Daddy, Tracks on Terror Gang Dark Rhythm, Gladiator Season with Trip Jones, and Florida Flame Part 1. Throughout this time period, he would frequently collaborate with B&B producers, as well as take random beats sent to him on Twitter and make stream of consciousness freestyle tracks. Covering all of these projects would take far too long. I'd suggest having a listen to these tapes after you're familiar with the rest of Perp's discography, as a lot of this material is less accessible. More good news surfaced with Rob Banks confirming in October of 2018 that his new album was on the way, with executive production from Perp. He would later drop the unreleased track, Come Through, from 2016 in November of 2018, originally produced by Loco Los and Perp. Complex also dropped a brief video on SGP around the same time, which discusses some of his influence on the underground and his beef with Rocky. It's worth a watch, but is lacking in detail. These little bits of exposure were great publicity for Marquis and started to generate hype for a possible comeback in 2019. So what happened? This brings us to 2019. So far, we've gotten Welcome to Vampland with Spooky Lee, which is mostly reused beats. Dragon No Slime, produced by Loco Los and Crook. Florida Finna Killed a Whole World, and some random compilations and various singles. But what has been most exciting about 2019 is Perp's two tracks, Dragon Shit and This, which have both professionally made videos by Charles Wheatle, with proper mixing and mastering by Clip275. These tracks were a good sign that Perp was starting to take his career seriously again. And with the announcement of a set of Rolling Loud, things were looking extremely positive for Marquise. This was the real tipping point for SGP, what I think most people considered his last chance at making a comeback. But to make things work, he needed to take this event seriously and deliver a quality set. But it was pretty clear within the first three minutes that Perp was just improvising most of the performance, with no set track list. This was not the ideal choice, and after some complications, the crowd looked pretty confused. Meanwhile, 
Herb's internet fan base for enjoying the moment through the stream. Various familiar faces could be seen on the stage with Perp that night, including Denzel Curry, Choppo, Rob Banks, Keen Ayala, Simi and Lofty, as well as a guest performance from Nell of Raider Clan. The performance was legendary for fans of Perp, but due to a lack of stage present and some complications, I don't think this performance actually helped elevate Perp much at all. This was reflected in the atmosphere of the crowd, who for the most part looked bored and uninterested. Despite this, the event marked a milestone for Perp, as he finally gained some recognition, even appearing briefly in No Jumper's vlog, with mentions of an interview. Shout out to No Jumper, Al 22, I'ma see your ass soon, salute man, I'ma do that interview. Gang. Shout out to the cameraman, y'all in Miami, y'all be safe. You already know, gang. But this interview is probably never going to happen, as the hype for Perp has died down significantly since the performance. While many of SGP's releases from 2015 onward have been experimental and very unique, lo-fi and dark experimental trap music have not been very popular in recent years. In fact, the whole scene has gotten more underground, with the breakout artists dumbing down the sound for mainstream audiences. As a fan of Perp, I'd personally like to see more original production, as these days he is mostly using beats from B&B producers and sampling old tracks. While Perp may want to appear like a cold stoic character with a not giving a fuck attitude, he is clearly struggling with his mental health, which can be seen in his recent suicide threats and other erratic behaviour such as masturbating on Twitter. I think most fans who have stuck around this far know Perp isn't going to blow up and that for him to get back on his feet, he needs some serious help. With that being said though, he doesn't have much to prove, with multiple classic releases and a reputation of infamy originality, and a strong against the norm approach to music. If he wanted to blow up, he probably could have done so, but due to his instability and history of betrayal, it's quite clear he has no plans of doing so. It's pretty obvious that Mark East has had it tough throughout these years, but it would be ignorant to assume that his personality hasn't been a problem. With that being said, I really respect his authenticity and ability to not really care and make whatever type of music he feels like. While most rappers these days are quick to hop on trends and fit in with the crowd, Perp shows he's above this, starting his own trends and putting on for Miami. Despite what people like Trap Law may say about SGP, it would be pretty ignorant to claim that Perp hasn't seriously made an impact on underground hip-hop, with Raider Clan, Funk and the Florida scene, and pushing the boundaries for trap music forward. Without artists like Perp, Lil B, Odd Future and Chief Keef, experimenting with what it means to be a rapper in the early 2010s, things would probably be looking very different. Unfortunately, Perp is one of those artists who has been completely misunderstood and is still a difficult artist to bring up in conversations, as is the case for many pioneers and innovators. Exploring this topic has been a lot of fun, and I want to thank everyone involved in helping me out. Shout out to Zopgod, Space Ghost Perp Archive, Money Jordan is a pro, Madvilles, and everyone on KTT who has helped me fact check and make suggestions on the script. I know I've probably missed various details, but I've done my best to explore this unique character in an objective way, while also sharing my own opinions. If anyone wants to send me more info, please hit me up on Twitter or Instagram, as I may end up re-releasing all three parts in a full-length documentary video. So stay tuned, because I have a lot of ideas for videos and we'll continue exploring influential figures and subgenres throughout music history, and not just within hip hop. So comment your suggestions below. I hope you enjoyed this series as much as I did making it. Please stay tuned and subscribed, and thanks for watching.